What's up guys, Will here alongside with my two sons, Will Jr. and Weston. This is the $550 gaming PC build that I've been talking about in past videos. We're doing this because basically Will Jr.'s PC is uh, really slow and sluggish. Uh, I built it for around $250 uh, with some new and existing parts I had laying around. Uh, rounding it out, we have the Corsair Carbide 88R Mid-ATX case. It has a nice little window so you can see inside its components. Probably add some RGB lighting because that's what all the cool kids are doing these days. For processing power, we have the Core i3 6100 uh, 3.7 gigahertz uh, base clock uh, processor. This is a nice budget processor. Although it's dual core, it does have hyper threading, so you get the four logical cores. Uh, sticking in it also is the MSI B150 mortar motherboard. This is an upgrade I did over what's going to be listed in the description. I, I, this one has two PCI slots for two video cards that I run in Crossfire, but realistically, I don't foresee us ever doing it, so I would suggest do, getting the one that's listed in the description for the budget build. We also have 8 gigabytes of ballistics RAM. We have a 128 gigabyte SSD that I already had. I'll have something comparable <laughs> listed in the description. I have the MSI RX 470. I went with this over the 1050 Ti just due to some research. This looks like it's pulling better FP or better frame rates than the uh, 1050 Ti. And really, this card for the money, you can't really beat it at all. So I think that is it. We went over all the components. So for this build, I'm going to try and get Will Jr. and Weston to build it. I'm going to try and be hands off. So we'll see how that goes, but uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's build this thing. Okay, so the kids helped me build the PC did not go so well. Processors were dropped, ample strength was missing to lock down the RAM, and it was probably a terrible idea on my part. Hence the subpar time lapse. Anyways, you can probably also tell from the B-roll that the PSU for some reason was not modular at all. I'll have to check what I ordered to see if they sent me the wrong PSU, but I digress. Let's take a look at these benchmarks. For the benchmarks, everything is ran at 1080p, as that is what this budget rig was built for. For the 3 d Mark benchmarks, I decided to include the test results from my GTX 1070 vs 1080 video. Be sure to go check that out if you haven't. But as you can see from the DirectX 12 times by benchmark, the CPU basically performs 50% less compared to the i5 6600K. And you can also see from somewhat from the same results when you compare the RX 470 to the GTX 1070 and 1080. This build, mind you, cost around $1,000 less than my 1070 and 1080 builds. So price per, per performance, we are showing a real good start to this rig's capabilities. Running Fire Strike produces some good results for this budget card for both FPS and performance scores. Again, FPS showing 40-50% to 50 less in performance, but definitely showing that we are able to play some games on this machine. Moving on to Eugene Heaven. 
I have tried a different number of settings trying to achieve an FPS close to 60 and thankfully was able to achieve that as you can see with the setting of high quality, tessellation at moderate setting, and putting the anti-aliasing at 4. As you can see, the anti-aliasing is a huge stress on the video card. But pretty impressive results I have to say, especially when you take into account that my son's probably only going to be playing Minecraft and Roblox for the most part, but don't worry, he's getting a little older so I'm going to try and introduce him to some RPGs and Overwatch. So let's take a look at some actual game engine benchmarks. Looking at GTA 5, a game that he's definitely not going to be playing anytime soon for obvious reasons, but it has a good built-in benchmark tool. I only ran one benchmark on it at max settings without multi-sampling anti-aliasing and was pulling an average of 71 FPS. Pretty good in my opinion, I'd have to say I'm pretty impressed. Moving on to Overwatch, a game I play on the daily and just introduced to him, we are able to get great frame rates well over 60 FPS at the highest setting. And I would assume we could still achieve this at 4K given this is not the most demanding game, but we're showing for its pop popularity. Moving on to some more demanding games such as Witcher 3, I tested the presets and as you can see the 60 FPS average point is at a high preset with hair works off. Playing at ultra still yields over 30 FPS which is still very playable, especially coming from a console, but the point is this is a budget build and you can play a lot of the demanding games at a great FPS. Moving on to probably the newest game here and probably the most demanding and that would be Battlefield 1. I'm having a lot of fun on this game and I really was interested on how this machine would perform and as you can see at all the presets well above 60 FPS and this was playing multiplayer with a shitload of things happening. So for $550 you can build a 1080p gaming beast. And the nice thing about this build is that it can be upgraded as you can go. If you go check out my other videos on comparing the 2012 to my 2016 build, you likely come to the conclusion that building a new rig is not always the best option in terms of budget. So later down the line, feel free to upgrade the CPU and GPU in this rig. Now with this build, I had the i3-6100 from last year on a Black Friday deal, and since then the Cabby Lake has been released, and the i3-7100 with that release, which is about 200 megahertz faster. You're going to see a, a very minimal difference between that processor um, compared to the 6100, but if you can get the Cabby Lake, get it. Uh, both Skylake and Cabby Lake use the same socket type, 1151, so don't worry about compatibility issues, but do be cautious with Cabby Lake in regards to only supporting Windows 10. I will be listing a site where you can get a cheap Windows 10 key. I've personally used this myself a handful of times and have not had any issues so far. All in all, I'm pretty happy with the performance, and my little man is pretty happy too. He's having a blast on his new gaming rig. He aspires to make his own YouTube videos, as he's always bugging me to make gaming videos with him. So, with that said, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Uh, everything in this video will be listed in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please don't go without hitting that like button, and definitely subscribe to see more upcoming content, including more build videos. Thanks for watching, and as always, I will see you guys on the next one. Have you really had that there the whole time? Oh. <clears throat>